Good morning. It's good to see you all here this morning. I want to welcome you and welcome those that are online. If you'll uh, take your song hymnal and turn to page 43, we'll sing uh, Nothing But the Blood. can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Uh, verse 4 here. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, amen. We're glad that you're here this morning and trust it'll be a blessing to you and a help to you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to give us a good day today in the house of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so very much being able to call upon you at this time. And Lord, we do ask that you would just have your will and way in every heart and every life this morning. The ones that are here and the ones that are home, Lord, tuning in, I just pray your blessing upon them. They receive something from the Word of God that would be an encouragement and a strength to them. And, Lord, we just pray that your will will be done every heart and every life today. And as the Word goes forth in Sunday school, the morning service, and the afternoon service, Lord, that you just have your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Brother Jim, if you'll come, take our offering. <clears throat> Brother Jim, would you lead us in prayer? bless you as you give. If you uh, take your hymnals and turn to page 50, we'll sing, uh, There's Power in the Blood. We'll sing the first and the last verse. <clears throat> Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? 
there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, cleanse, power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Well, amen. Thank you, Brother Cross. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. I need to pray for Cindy and, and Henry, if you will. Uh, and, of course, uh, others. Miss B, if she is having health issues and things of that nature. So uh, pray for her, if you will. And then also uh, Mary Doble. Uh, just continue praying for her. as ongoing health problems and things like that, as many people are having. Uh, but heart will. Uh, and able to get around very well, and so uh, pray for him, if you will. And then uh, Kim uh, Dawson, uh, she had uh, some procedure done, new medications that coming up, and then, uh, of course, uh, they're without power this morning. That's why they're not here. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, that does hinder a little bit, uh, but the, uh, especially if you depend upon electricity to get ready and different things like that. So uh, pray for them, if you will. They'll soon have power back. And then, of course, uh, pray for uh, the ones that we've been praying for all, you know, quite a while. Uh, for Wanda Clark, uh, for her strength, and uh, she would get uh, feeling better. And then, of course, uh, Michelle Sims. Uh, pray for her with her ongoing cancer. Uh, Kara Thomas. Pray for her uh, as well, uh, dealing with cancer. And then uh, Lauren Rittman uh, had spine surgery. I'm not real sure who that is, but uh, we'll pray for them anyway. And so uh, just have the will and way in the heart and life of uh, him. And of course, of his family as well. And then pray for the church. Uh, pray for the pastor and leadership of the church that the Lord's will will be done. And of course, our finances here and praying for one another that we would remain healthy. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I still think, uh, you know, of COVID. Uh, it's going around and different things like that. Every once in a while you hear break outbreak of that. And so we need to just uh, praying for one another in that way, in that regard, that we remain uh, healthy and and. Uh, and just continue uh, serving the Lord and doing what the Lord would have us to do. Uh, please uh, pray for, if you will, uh, for the uh, policemen and the first responders and different ones that we've been praying for all along. And of course, the military. And I understand that uh, at Camp Atterbury uh, this past week uh, that they were being deployed and uh, they'll spend some time, I think, in Texas and then they'll be gone on to the Middle East. And so uh, that is for, uh, you know, our National Guard, Indiana National Guard that has been called up and so and going to be deployed. And so uh, that's something to pray about uh, and, uh, of course, keep them safe and different things like that. And then uh, pray for uh, the Garcias in Australia. Uh, pray for the nation of Israel. Uh, that the Lord's will will be done. And of course, you know, I'm always reminded that no one is going to defeat uh, the nation of Israel. 
uh, because God says, I'll bless you that blesses them, and I'll curse you that curses them. So, uh, you know, they're in pretty good hands with the Lord, but we do need to pray that the Lord's will will be done uh, there in Israel, and and everything will be settled down and things of that nature. And, of course, we know that uh, at the end time, uh, things are going to be going towards the Middle East, and that will be the, the center of, of everything that will be taking place during the tribulation period and things of that nature. And so uh, just pray for that, if you will. Uh, do we have anybody uh, have a new prayer request uh, over here? Anybody? How about in this section, anyone? Okay, in the far section. All right, let's go to the Lord and pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for being able to approach your throne at this time. And Lord, we do uh, uh, lift the names up to the people that we have uh, called out this morning. And Lord, realizing that we can do nothing. And the Lord, that uh, we're not able to do anything but lift our voices up to you and ask that you would uh, just uh, intervene in their life. And Lord, that you uh, raise them up from their illness and uh, issues that they have with health. And, and uh, Father, I, I just pray that you would help them uh, to just uh, take every day at a time, one day at a time, and Lord, just move on in their life. And Lord, that you would continue strengthen them in the, in the things of the Lord. And, and of course, as they go through things, they'd be more dependent upon you and looking to you for guidance and direction in their life. And Lord, we just pray that your will will be done. For we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, turn in your Bible, if you will, to the book of John. John chapter 17 and we're moving along a little bit, and so uh, uh, we have been dealing with uh, the Lord's Prayer, the intercessory prayer of the Lord. Uh, of course, uh, we see that uh, uh, he, uh, the Lord started out just praying for, uh, the, uh, for the disciples, and then in, in verse uh, 20, uh, we begin to see that uh, there, there's a little change in the prayer of the Lord, and of course we see uh, coming up to this point, the Lord was just praying for the disciples, as we have said, now he is letting them know that he is praying for all believers during that time, all the believers during that time uh, that, uh, that they be prayed for, uh, that means the individuals that are, uh, that uh, let me move this down a little bit. I, I think I'm a little loud, but uh, all of them that have been saved, and of course we know that there have been a number of them uh, received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior in the book of John. If you'd go back and look, which we'll not do that, but you remember the woman at the well, the Samaritan people that received the Lord, and, and of course the, uh, the one, uh, one at the pool, of Bethesda and all like that, and Bethesda and so all like that. And so uh, there have been a number of people that have received the Lord, uh, and of course he had been praying for them. And then it goes on, and, and we pick up in verse 20, it says, Neither pray I for these alone, meaning uh, the disciples, meaning disciples. I'm not just praying for them alone. But then, but for them also which believe on me, which will believe on me. Now that is the ones in the future uh, through their word. Uh, you know, even after the Lord goes back into heaven, uh, there'll be others saved uh, because of the disciples going out and, and telling people about what uh, they have received from the Lord and what they know about the Lord, and they'll be able to present them, uh, them uh, uh, the Lord to them. And, of course, they will believe the word uh, that the, the disciples have. And then not only that, uh, but if we are giving forth the word of God uh, in, the, in the right way, 
uh, then uh, our word is going to be used as well uh, for them to believe. And so we see that uh, through, uh, of course, we don't do any saving or anything like that. All we do is just present the gospel uh, to individuals and, and where that they, they come to the point where that uh, through our uh, witness uh, that they receive uh, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ as their, uh, as their Savior. And so uh, we see the future believers will be saved. And, of course, we know from the Word of God how that it says uh, through their word. Let me emphasize that just a little bit more uh, by knowing the importance of getting out the word of God. Uh, getting out the word of God, and of course that is, uh, we see that they are uh, identifying themselves uh, with the Lord when they are giving forth uh, the word of God. And of course they are identifying themselves uh, with the Lord, and of course the Lord is praying for them, and their faith in, in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, will just keep on building in their life, and they will shed it, uh, share it with other people as well all around about them. And then, of course, uh, it's only through the Word. It's only through the Word that an individual gets saved. There's nothing else. And so we see there uh, from the Word of God how that the Bible telling us uh, that through their word, if they give out the word of God, and you know Paul said one time, he said, whether it be in pretense or in truth, he said, I, I'm grateful that Christ is preached. And so sometimes, just giving a witness, and although it may not be true, God can still use that uh, for, uh, for his honor and, and, uh, and, and glory. Uh, in, his, in the life of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, many times, I remember when I first started witnessing for the Lord, I always, you know, there's sometimes I just didn't get it correct. I just didn't get it right. And, and you know, and after I'd leave the, the place, I, I would say, uh, well, I could have done better and things like that. But God will take that and use it for his honor and glory, whatever uh, we say for the Lord and doing uh, what the Lord would have us to do. And, of course, we believe in Christ. And notice, if you will, going to the book of Romans, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 10, and notice in verse 13, if you will, uh, it says there, uh, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him and whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher or without a witness? Now the preacher there, uh, you know a lot of times we think, well, it's the preacher's job, his responsibility. But if you are giving forth the word of God, in a sense, you are preaching to the people and a witness to the people. And so if we see that the Bible telling us that there has to be a witness for the Lord in order for an individual uh, to be in Christ and, and be saved. And then look, if you will, at verse 17 where it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And that's the only way that a person is going to be built in the faith and have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is uh, through, uh, through the preaching of the Word of God. Going back to the book of John, chapter 17, and notice, if you will, in verse uh, 20, 21, where it says that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And so here we find in this verse of scripture uh, speaks of a union uh, which uh, binds all believers together. A, a union uh, that binds all of us together. And of course, if we stay uh, in the word of God uh, and, and not deviate from the word of God, we can remain one uh, in, in the Lord. And, of course, that is what uh, 
uh, glorifies the Lord. When we remain on the same page and things like that, doing the same thing, and of course, uh, the Lord here mentions the unity of the believer uh, and quite, uh, quite a bit in, in the book of John, chapter 17. Uh, we see that in verse 11, if you go back, he starts in talking about uh, the being one, about being one. And we covered that pretty, pretty well, uh, knowing that uh, uh, you know, it, it was intended uh, for to be one and where we'll not have a, a bunch of denomination as we have now. Why do we have different denominations? Because people forgot to be one. They had the word of God uh, from, from the Lord, and, and what his word was, uh, it should uh, remain uh, in them, and if it remained in them, then they would be one instead of having a little, you know, a little quirk here and a little quirk there. Well, I don't believe this and I don't believe that. And, of course, uh, we are no longer one uh, in, in the, uh, as uh, the believers is in the world. So, of course, and then in verse uh, 21, 22, and 23, uh, the Lord speaks about, about the, uh, being one in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, uh, we know the reason why, especially when he talked, uh, when he was praying for the, the early uh, church, uh, the, the disciples and the others that were uh, being saved, uh, we know the reason why. Uh, because there was a division between the Jew and the Gentile. There was a division there between the two. And, <coughs> excuse me. And of course you know if you go back into the book, uh, into the book of John, uh, you don't have to go anywhere else, and you will see where that the Lord instructed uh, the disciples and others not to go to anywhere but the house of Israel. The Jews only, uh, at that particular time, uh, they only went to the Jewish people. And so here, most of these people are Jewish people. And, and of course, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, may, uh, two disciples were Gentiles, uh, but most of them were, uh, were Jewish people, and they had been taught to go to only uh, to the nation of Israel, to the house of Israel, and to tell them, well, when the Lord opened up the door uh, to the Gentiles uh, to witness for the Lord, then that created a division. Well, uh, does that mean us to do that today? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm speaking for the disciples. Uh, does the Lord just want us to go to the Jewish people, or do he, does he want? us to go to, uh, the, uh, to the Gentiles as well. And, of course, we see that that caused a, a division uh, between them. And, of course, uh, we see that uh, uh, the, because of the division, they would have a hard time uh, going to, uh, to uh, uh, the Gentiles' nations. But uh, when they received the Lord as their personal Savior, I'll say the Samaritan, then they were to come together as one. And, and of course, you know from uh, the study of the book of John, the uh, Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. But when they get saved, uh, they'll become as one. And so uh, that in the latter part of that world, uh, in, in that part of the world, it says uh, in uh, verse 21, that they also may be one in us. Uh, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And so uh, we see that uh, through that, the world may believe that thou hast sent me into the world. Now, the Lord didn't say uh, that the world uh, may believe in me, but he says uh, uh, to send me, uh, the, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Thou hast sent me. I got to thinking about this. You know, even today, there's a lot of people that do not believe that Jesus Christ is God. They simply do not believe that. They do not believe that he was sent from, 
from the Father into this world. In fact, we see where that Nicodemus said, Thou art a prophet. And, and different ones said that he was a prophet and things like that. Uh, but we see when we are one uh, in the Lord and have the same message, uh, then they have to realize that it's more than just a good man that walked upon the face of this earth. It was more than a prophet, although he is a prophet, a priest, and king. Uh, but we see here they thought he was an earthly prophet and different things like that and did not believe in him. And, of course, we see uh, sent me and believing in him is uh, two different things altogether. And, of course, we know from that uh, no one is brought to Christ by anything other than the word of God. That's the only thing. And when the word of God is applied by the Holy Spirit of God, then the individual receives the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And then look at verse 22, if you will. In verse 22, it says, The glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. And so, once again, the Lord here is speaking of the glory uh, of the glory that uh, the Father has given him. Uh, this is not, uh, this is not to say uh, that, uh, uh, that his glory that he possessed before, uh, he emptied himself, uh, what is it, um, uh, Philippians chapter 2 and, and verse 6 or something around that area, where that it says that he emptied himself uh, of all... Uh, of all his former glory and things like that, and he become a man. And so here we see uh, that he's uh, not talking about the glory that he had before, uh, before he become man, uh, but he is talking about the glory uh, that he has uh, uh, upon this earth. He, of course, he laid aside his glory and took upon the form of a servant. We know that from Scripture. And this glory is the glory that he received on this earth uh, for just being uh, living a perfect life and doing the perfect work uh, for the Lord. And, of course, while he was up on this earth, uh, that was a glory to the Lord. And, of course, uh, we see uh, uh, that the Bible tells us uh, that he rece uh, received an inheritance. Uh, notice, if you will, in Hebrews, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 1, uh, if you turn there, in verse 1 it says this, now of, now of the things which we have spoken, uh, this, uh, I'm in chapter 8, I'm sorry. I need to go back to chapter 1 and then verse 1. A God who at sundry times in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers, by the prophets, and then it says in verse 2, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. And so here we find the Bible telling us that he has received an inheritance. Uh, he has appointed an heir of all things, by whom also he is made. Uh, he made the world. And then, of course, uh, we know that one day that we are going to share uh, as a believer in the inheritance. Look, if you will, in Romans uh, chapter Romans chapter 8. Uh, we see that Romans chapter 8 and uh, verse 17, uh, if you will notice that verse, and it says, If children, then heir heir of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may all be also glorified together. And then notice, if you will, in, in verse 30 of Romans chapter 8, in verse 30, where it says this, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, uh, then are, are chosen, 
uh, we see them he also called, and whom he called, uh, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And so here we see from the word of God how uh, that the, the, the Lord is glorifying the saints of God. And of course, we see that this is a spiritual unity uh, that began now, uh, but we see that the Bible telling us it will not be complete uh, in this life. It will always, it, it will never come to completion in this lifetime, and of course, it will go on into eternity. Uh, notice, if you will, John uh, chapter 17, and going back to our, our text at verse 23, uh, where that it says, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, uh, has loved them, uh, and has loved them as uh, thou hast loved me. And so here we see in this verse of Scripture, we see that here is a far, uh, just a, going a little bit farther, evidence that the unity which uh, the Lord was praying for in verse 21, and we saw that in verse 22, and then we see that in verse 23, how that it is made perfect in one, how it's been made perfect in one. In them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. And of course, we see that this will not be realized until uh, the Lord returns, and when he, uh, when he uh, receives his saints, uh, if you will uh, look at uh, Ephesians, uh, we see that in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 13, where it talks about this very thing, uh, that being made perfect. And notice, if you will, in verse 13 of, uh, fully, uh, of Ephesians 4, till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statutes of the fullness of Christ. And, of course, that will not happen until we are with the Lord. And then notice, if you will, Ephesians chapter 5. And notice uh, verse uh, 27, and read along with me, if you will, or just listen, uh, that, that, that it says in verse 27, that he may present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot nor wrinkle or any such thing, but that he should be holy and without blemish. And so this is the, uh, the uh, perfected uh, life of an individual. Uh, then, of course, uh, all believers will be one, and, of course, a perfect oneness in the Lord Jesus Christ in their faith and, of course, their faith, and then they'll have full knowledge. Uh, they'll love one another, and they'll have a love for one another. And then, of course, we see that there'll be a holiness, and then not only that, but glory, glory to come. And so we see that uh, the Bible telling us there uh, that uh, this is all going to take, we'll become perfect in one, the oneness of the Lord, when the Lord returns and we are changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, and, and of course we'll be with the Lord forever. Uh, going back to John chapter 17, and notice, if you will, in verse uh, uh, 23, uh, where it says uh, that they, uh, it says there, that the world may know that thou hast sent me, that the world may know that they have sent me. When the saints have all been gathered together in one, as uh, uh, John chapter 11 and verse uh, 52 tells us, one day all be gathered together, and of course uh, we will uh, bring glory to the Lord uh, forever and ever. 
uh, we'll, his, uh, he will look at us and we'll bring forth his glory. And of course, he will have glory in us as well. And of course, uh, when the glory that the Lord receives from the Father, it will certainly be given to us uh, that way and to the saints they will be uh, perfect and one uh, for the rest of their life. Look at uh, Colossians. Uh, I, I like to look at uh, different scriptures uh, to prove to you what the Bible says. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 and, and verse 4 uh, uh, shows us just uh, being perfect and one. Uh, it says in verse 4, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. And that shows us beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, that we are going to be one with him. And, of course, we are going to bring forth the glory, uh, appear in glory with him and be glorified in all that and things like that. Uh, look, if you will, at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and, and verse 10 where that it says, When he shall come, be glorified in his saints and be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was, was believed, uh, believed in that day. And of course, here we see it, that it just simply says, Here from the word of God, then shall uh, come and be glorified in his saints, glorified in his saints. Now going back to the book of John, chapter 17 and uh, verse 23, it tells us in the latter part, and, and has, uh, has loved them as thou hast loved me. And as it says there, uh, has loved me, them as thou hast loved me. And so once again, we see from the word of God uh, that God the Father loves the saints as he, he loves Christ. Just the same as he loved Christ. Because he loved Christ, uh, he loved the saints uh, of God. And of course the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16 where it says that it was all done for Christ's sake. It was not done for any other, other than Christ's sake that he did that. And, of course, uh, we are chosen in him, uh, in, in him and pardoned and sanctified and glorified in him. Uh, just think about all what the Lord has done and going to do for the child of God uh, as, a, as a day approaching. And, of course, it won't be long until he'll be coming back. Look at verse uh, 27, or verse 24, if you will, please, where it says, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. And, you know, uh, I could not find any better uh, uh, explanation for this verse uh, other than uh, A.W. Pink. A.W. Pink had, had uh, written down uh, about this verse of Scripture, and I, I want to share that with you this morning because uh, we see that uh, the Bible says uh, that in, in this verse of Scripture, it says, Father, I, I will that they also may... Uh, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. And so uh, we see the, the Bible telling us uh, what a comfort it is to know uh, that uh, we are going to be with him. It's such a comfort uh, to know. And, of course, we see that uh, it is well to meditate upon the Scripture here in verse 24, uh, because it speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, we see that very clearly, that if we would meditate upon the Scriptures and just not read them and go on and, and things of that nature, but really get into the Word of God and, and the Scriptures that should mean a lot to us. 
uh, this verse of Scripture ought to mean a lot to us. Father, I will that they also, uh, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou hast loved me from uh, uh, before the foundation of the world. And, of course, we see that that's great assurance as well. Uh, uh, they uh, give to the Lord. All of the redeemed will enter into heaven. All of, the, all of the saints of God one day will be entered into heaven. And, of course, that's a great assurance uh, to individuals that lack, uh, you know, real assurance in their life. That is something that they can uh, really look at and, and have as assurance in their life. And, of course, there will be joy as well uh, that uh, we see from the scriptures. He will not be satisfied until every believer, every believer uh, be in his presence. That's the Lord. And, of course, uh, he is going to come back personally uh, for us. He's not going to leave it to anyone else. Uh, he will come back personally and take us to be with him, uh, John 14, 3. Uh, and we know that very well. Uh, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am may be also. And so here we see that the Bible telling us it is a, a time when the Lord is going to come back and personally uh, receive us unto the Lord. Uh, our time is gone. People out there, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll pick it up again in verse uh, uh, 24. And so uh, read over that verse once again, and we'll look at it a little bit, maybe a little bit, then we'll go on uh, in Scripture. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Word of God. And Lord, I just pray that your will will be done, never heart, never life. And Lord, that you give us understanding of the scriptures. And Lord, just think about the Lord praying for us uh, during this time as we walk about this old world. They have someone that is continually praying for us. And Lord, uh, that is a great comfort, knowing that you are interested in us and caring for us the way that you do. Lord, we pray that you would bless the morning service. Ask your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you're dismissed.